Hello and welcome once again to Crazy Comics and Stories. It's me, your charming and delightful old Uncle Rap Bastard. And at the other end of the series of tubes and wires that we call the internets is Joe, Crazy Writer. How you doing today, Joe? If Wolverine heals automatically, he, he must not be circumcised, right? There is a rumor going around on the internet that he has two um, two two sets of genitalia. Oh, oh like ale. Why not? I I don't know why people would come up with this rumor. I don't know I think what they're ties. doing to uh, to propagate it. I just know that I keep reading it on on Twitter on the fire breathing Twitter machine, and I think to myself, I never would have thought of that, nor would I have cared. I, I think it all has to do with the whole uh, bat prick. You know, people are really uh, <laughs> interested in, in sexual uh, deviations of the uh, superhero. I mean, look at way back on Mallrats, you know, when he was asking, how did the thing make love? Like, even Peter David encouraged it when uh, he had uh, Banner Hulk out while he was uh, getting busy with Betty. Oh, yeah. And I'm not talking Betty and Veronica. Wait, they haven't done that crossover yet? No, but they did cross over with Gen 13, where uh, Grunge, I think, suggested some things and got slapped very hard by Betty and Veronica. And when he even suggested it to Archie, Archie was like, dude, we don't think that way. I really miss Gen 13. I thought it was a fun book. I don't know why well, they just can't get that Wildstorm thing launched in the DC universe. Well, it's. I think it's the same reason why when Marvel starts a subline, eventually it dies. I think people eventually start saying, well, because this isn't the main universe, the stories, quote, don't matter, unquote. That sounds like a Festivus grief. Yeah, it very well could be. We'll be doing Festivus while you're gone again. Well, I thanks. personally think that you schedule these surgeries so that you miss the Festivus show. Well, I'm not saying that you're not not wrong. Not ever, you know, really. <clears throat> well, on the plus side, we're, we're recording this three days before I go under the knife and mere hours before the uh, crisis on CW, the crisis on infinite Earth, which is really cool. Oh, by the way, there's something called crisis aftermath. Has no information on the CW. Oh, what the hell am I saying this for? It'll be too late by the time you listen to this. All it says is hosted by Kevin Smith. So I'm curious as to, the other thing that was weird is when i was setting up my recorder it was like part one was supergirl part two was batwoman part four was black lightning and part three was flash and they're on that sequential order whereas supergirl sunday the other two were batwoman black friday or black lightning was uh tuesday and then flash was on on uh what's that day tuesday Wednesday. Tuesday. No, no, nothing, nothing Wednesday. And then I think two weeks later, if I'm if I'm reading the schedule right, that's when the the final parts of the crisis are. So it's like you got to wait a couple weeks, which is cool because I'll be hopefully conscious enough to be able to watch it. Now, if I could just get Star Wars to postpone their premiere uh, a couple weeks, then everything will be happy in the Cray world. Uh, talk to our executive producer about that. Uh, no, he's he's. You know, I thought I was the executive producer. You are. Well, what what do I do? I, I, I thought I was in charge of the money. No, no, no. The executive producer's in charge of getting guests. Oh, that explains why we haven't had any. Because, you know, on Howard Stern, uh, uh, Gary Delabate, Baba Booey is the executive producer. He's the one oh. who gets them all their guests. I thought he was the producer. No, no, no. He's the executive producer. Ah, the fancy pants. Yeah. You're not just a regular Baba Booey executive producer. You're an executive producer. And that is oh. your title. You're the executive let's, producer. Let's change it to supreme producer. As long as I remain tyrant, I don't care. Yeah, because that way nobody quite knows what I do. Okay. By the way, if you want to be an executive producer, the, the it's now an uh, uh, official opening here. Yes. Yeah, we are roles. accepting applications. We are. We are. But, but that's well, not we, why we're here. Really? Oh, I thought it was just... We're here to talk about the draft. No, 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 no. We're, we're, we're way we're, past Thanksgiving. We're here to talk about previews. Joe, you did not have your box day yet, did you? No, no. 
So I, Joe won't I, I, have I, any feedback on previews. It's all me this time. Well, I I actually went out and out of my own since, since you you have not won a ask the Strode, I took out uh, $3.95 out of petty cash. That's right. I haven't got any of my shiny new dimes. Nope. Nope. I've been using it to buy keys for the Strode compound. You think and I, uh, in a place. Lord knows I clean up other people's places. Yeah. Yeah. They all hate you for it. Yeah, pretty much. But I bought my own preview. As a matter of fact, the guys from the source were kind of surprised to see me walk in because we did a very thorough cleaning of their graphic novels. <laughs> I think we closed the place. We were there for Yes, we did. We were there until they closed. We're just going to run in and grab a... And they uh, bought, brought a, not just a hand truck, but one of the flat hand trucks that you use to deliver um, uh, what it did, flat screen TVs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and Kelly uh, White from the uh, MCBA Spring Con you know, one of the MCBA guys who, uh, by the way, the spring con will, will be come hell or high water, May 16th and 17th, 2020, which is weird because, I, you know, it's weird saying that already. I just finally got used to writing 2019 on all my checks, which itself is weird because I don't use checks anymore. But So anyways, that's, that's why it took you so long. As far as I know, but keep an eye on MCBA comiccons.com because they'll send out dealer invites. They'll send out guest invites. Uh, I know they're answering their emails. So if you got questions, but uh, the the big ones I see all the time, are, when are you doing dealer tables? When are you doing? Well, probably not till after the new year. So, and I imagine their executive producer is busy uh, trying to, you know, corral guests and everything too. That's all I'm going to say about that. So uh, the previews. This That's was, all I'm going to uh, say about that. Yeah, previews for this month, it says December 19 on it. These are for books that are mostly shipping in February. Yep. And um, February is one of the slowest months in comics, and uh, wow, did it show, because oh. this is my, I did my uh, DCB, I did my uh, DCB service order, and it was my lowest order in ages. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to, I made notes not only, because there, there are not a lot of new things that I'm going to start or that I'm interested in, but there's a ton of graphic novels and things that are coming out. Things that I've recommended in the past, some in the distant past that I'll probably, re I'll talk about now. So I'll be delving into different things that, uh, you know, we, we've talked about that. Uh, here's your chance to jump on in case you don't want to pay outrageous back issue prices, or you didn't get a chance to uh, jump on the first time around. And I even got a few toys I'm interested in. Ooh. Yep. Well, we start as always with image. I know there is a whole bunch of uh, free comic book day shirts, hats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, Joe, have you ever ordered any of the clothing or or other stuff for free comic book day? I probably did when I had hot co or the crazy comics because that was the only free comic book day I delved in. But I don't think I bought any shirts or hats or anything uh if i had had the big store i may have but i don't know if i'd have bought them for people i don't know if people would have bought them but i might have just done it for you know the guys say hey let's all hands on deck let's have an event type thing we don't I, know Somebody i have bought to chip in the, the dimension to see if how i would have handled that i bought the shirt when uh, mike allred drew it but this is just the logo stuff this month. Yeah, no logos for us. No, no, no. Nope. The oh, only no. thing... Nope, go ahead. Uh, the free comic book day small raised magnet looks kind of cool. Yeah, you'd look cool with that on your chest. Or the uh, the dash of my... Uh, the hood of my car. Maybe I should do what Butch did with uh, your old car and just cover it in refrigerator magnets. That's a good idea. I got a few I can borrow you. There or you give go. you. Either way, I don't know. Hey, if you got a refrigerator magnet, you got nothing to do with it. Send it to Corey. There we go. That'll that'll be fun. I got nothing on image. Uh, nothing. 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 You're there not is one thing I am doing about There's... Savage Dragon two hundred and fifty. Well, that's not new to me because I collect Savage Dragon. Even if well, I were then... to give up everything and never buy. Any new comics, again, I would always buy Savage Dragon just because I've been with Eric Larson from the beginning. I have, I believe, every variant cover 
he's ever done with the exception of maybe some of the early newsstand ones. Although I do have, I think the issue 10 where it was like a totally different cover. And of course I'm going all out. I'm getting all six covers of Savage Dragon 250. And this includes Eric Sohn. He's got Frank Cho lined up. He's got Rob Liefeld, Walter Simonson, Scotty Young, and of course the blank sketch variant. And I've also got to talk to maybe a guy at the source to see, because last time he he had like a nudie variant and the source was able to connect me up with it. So, but that was like a special order thing. He wasn't, he kind of jumped through in at the last minute. And, you know, I'm always big on just the, the anniversary issues like this anyways, because they're usually kind of fun. They usually pack them with different things. So, uh, and of course, Savage Dragon is the second original image title to reach 250 and uh, starting his countdown to 300. And of course, it's the only one that has the original creator on it doing it consecutively. I, I know he, he didn't do issue 13, but he did come back and do a real issue 13. So, oh, all is, all is swell. We should probably explain that we don't go over every single book we buy. Um, when we do our previews thing, we talk about the uh, special books, the first issues, the trade paperbacks, hardcovers, things that are new in this. You know, I buy Amazing Spider-Man. I'm not going to say every month, oh, I'm excited about Amazing Spider-Man. We just talk about the new stuff, kind of highlighting the new stuff, because otherwise the episode would be 24 hours long. Yeah. And, uh, oh, hey, we, we, you know, we did do a sale at Hot Comics 24-hour. We could try a 24-hour podcast. No. See, you see where the ideas go to die? Uh, I will point out, of course, the, the only – I pointed out last time, uh, The Clock, artist Colleen DeLoren, issue two is out. So you, you do have a chance to still jump on board. And I just uh, – I always mention her because uh, she's one of the artists that actually came to visit us at Hot Comics. And uh, I do like to see whatever she's doing and pick it up. I, other than that, I got nothing new from Image. There are a couple of trade paperbacks I want to point out. First is Battle Pug Volume 1. Uh, collects the first five issues of Mike Norton's new Battle Pug comic series. If you read the web series or bought the Compugnium, um, this is a fantasy world in which pugs are giant steeds. Pugs? Um, it's fun. It's well done. Uh, just go to Battle Pug. Look up Battle Pug and read the web strip. This is a kind of a continuation of that. Then on the next page is probably my favorite new series from Image in a while. Dead Eyes. Uh, written by Gary Duggan. Uh, drawn by Joel McRae and Mike Spicer. This is a kind of a criminal mercenary gun for hire who was very notorious in the 90s but vanished off the face of the earth and now he is back and um i really don't want to give it any more away than that other than this is a really cool series um with a lot of fun twists and don't let people spoil it for you it's on page 54 of the preview so you can if you got your previews you can you can uh, this is kind of like an interactive podcast yeah, you can follow along, or or you can uh, just uh, write write notes. And you can also contact us if you say like, "How could they have skipped that title?" It, it's so exciting. We're always we're always up for listening to other people and, and what they have to say. So uh, feel free to contact us. You'll hear it later on. And that for me was it for image. Yeah. Uh, Dark Horse. I had one thing new and a couple older ones. I'm going to push out. The uh, first one, all the way up to page 97, Abraham Stone Trade Paperback. No idea what it's about. Well, it's, it's a Western Noir comic, but it's from Joe Cooper. That's all you have to say. And uh, I guess this is a, uh, he did graphic novels? Yes. And was it through Dark Horse or through other people? Um, most of them were through Vertigo. Okay. So to me, these are t titles I've never read I like westerns, and uh, you, you get the third, of course, Kubert. So you got a, you got one, two, three hitting on all cylinders. So I'm definitely going to pick up that one. On that same page is another EC archive. This is part of the New Direction line, but this is the best of the New Direction line. It is the series Impact, 
which was kind of a continuation of shock suspense stories. Issue one has one of the greatest comic stories ever printed, Master Race by Bernie Krigstein. Um, I will, when this comes out, I will be doing a special episode just on that story. Oh, fun. And how well it's broken down and uh, do DVD commentary for it. But this was um, twist ending stories that could be approved by the comics code. Um, it was not their greatest work, but it does have, um, it's kind of the watered down version of EC. And watered down EC still had great art by people like Jack Davis, Jack Kamen, Reed Crandall, George Evans, Bernie Krigstein, Joe Orlando, Graham Engels, you know, again, as I always say, they had a murderer's row of artists. And while this is um, play, very clearly watered down, the story Master Race is the best EC story ever printed. It is amazing. It is dark. It is beautifully drawn. And the historical impact of that story goes far beyond... Um, anything else in this series so cannot recommend that enough even if you don't know much about ec this is a book to pick up so you can not just learn about ec but also see why people keep saying they were the best comic book company ever now in that category of things i'm going to point out that i'm not buying all because i already have them on page 92 is Aliens vs. Predator 30th Anniversary Original Comic Series. It's a hardcover, so it's a little expensive. And uh, down below, they actually have listed Aliens vs. Predator, they're the essential comic. So either way, I, I cannot stress how amazing, how geeked out we were for this particular title because, you know, it was such a natural fight, Aliens vs. Predator. And I even think... Was it Predators 2 in the background? They put the little teaser where there was an alien's head on the wall of the Predator ship. Yes. So you were already geeking on this one. And when it hit, it was like a nuke going off. Uh, it's been kind of, you know, diluted a little bit. But this was 14 years before they met on film. And that was kind of disappointing. Why they just didn't take it directly from the original comic series, I, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, Randy Stradley, the, the writer, would have loved the, the payday for it. But... This was an amazing series. If you can afford the hardcover, I imagine it's going to look beautiful. If you just want to read it, like I said, for twenty four ninety nine, you got the essential. You can reorder. And Dark Horse is cool. They give you the little order code for it, so you can go to your comic shop and they can get it if they don't already have it. Another series that I absolutely loved that I bought on the very next page, page 94, Lady Killer Volume 1 Library Edition. Again, another hardcover that I believe has both a uh, series in it. There were two, and uh, I'll just read it. Josie Schuler is a picture perfect homemaker, wife, and mother, but she's also a ruthless killer. She balances cheerful domestic bliss with coldly efficient assassinations. Uh, this is an oversized hardcover that has the original series and the follow up. So, kind of a compendium or an omnibus. Omnibi? Omnibi? And uh, I recommend it. Again, if you can find the paperbacks, they may be out of print. I don't know for sure. But uh, this would be an awesome way to have it on your shelf in a, in a really, really awesome package. That's it for me from Dark Horse. Anything else for you, Mr. S? No, not really. Onward, DC. Okay, now, of course, this is where we have to pause for a moment and get out. Put aside the big uh, ugh, diamond catalog and uh, put a... Grab the old DC. And, of course, DC doesn't number their pages, so you're just going to have to kind of go along with us. Uh, the one thing I pointed out or that I that caught my attention right away is uh, Green Lantern Season 2. And, again, this is Grant Morrison chugging us along, and uh, I'm along with Grant as long as he writes it. But here's your chance to jump on. He's doing seasons, and, and so it's not like an ongoing series. So this season is going to be 12 issues, which is okay, I guess. I'd, I'd be better off not knowing it was 12 issues because then you know, no matter how crazy it gets, by the time you get to issue 12, oh, well, uh, okay, we're at the end already. Yeah, but, but uh, remember, season one ended 
with a twist that uh, created a mini series. Yeah. In a separate universe. So with Grant Morrison, you never know, man. You never know. Yeah. So, and if you go to page 13, which is a couple of forwards of that, you have a chance to buy a couple of facsimile editions that I may actually pick up. Uh, the first one is Flash 123, and I'm proud to say I did own a copy at one time, and that is the classic 1961 that introduced the concept of the multiverse to DC, where you've got the Golden Age Flash and the Silver Age Flash both running towards uh, someone who's yelling, Flash, help me! This is such an iconic cover. It's been uh, swiped and homaged and ripped off so many times. And what's fun with the facsimile editions is that it's everything. I what I love are looking at the ads, you know, for stuff back then. It's just amazing the the crap they sold kids, you know, because they thought this was a kids' medium. Down below is the Green Lantern number one facsimile. Uh, I remember uh, the only one I've ever actually seen was my uh, buddy Pat's, uh, my partner Pat, when he had one. Uh, sadly, when he went to get it graded, he found out it was uh, restored, which is a very bitter thing. But we're not talking bitter today. You can, you can go back to a solo, Joe. And uh, I think Pat talked about it in our interview when we were. Oh, Pat's about- angry. Oh, Pat's not as angry Pat. as he was. When he found out his Amazing Fantasy 15 was. So, But I like these facsimile editions. I can't say I'm buying all of them, but uh, I do. I do like that idea, especially when they do all of them. I mean, everything, the ads and whatever else is inside it. Kind of a, a cool brand. glimpse of history. Uh, oddly I, enough. I would like to go back a few pages, Joe. Well, you, I'm going to sit back and let you do it because that is it for me, for DC. Well, um, the new Wonder comic series, Amethyst. Now, Amethyst is a character who um, is hit or miss for me, but this one's definitely going to be a hit because it's written and drawn by Amy Reader. Amy Reader. I I enjoy. And I guess it also means she's not going back to Rocket Girl. (sighs) But we've got a six-issue series by her as part of the Wonder Comics line. Um, On that same page as the... uh, Facsimile editions are also the 100-page Giants, Batman Giant number 3, Crisis on Infinite Earths number 2, um, Flash Giant number 3, Swamp Thing Giant number 3, and Wonder Woman Giant number 3. I think what we're learning is that the kid-type books like uh, Teen Titans Go and Scooby-Doo, those 100-page Giants didn't do as well, and they're just going to stick with the superheroes. We've also got a... Um, a couple of the big uh, anthology type books. One is uh, DC Crimes of Passion, which has uh, it's an eighty-page uh, prestige format one shot with a lot of uh, short stories in it. I've said before I really like that DC does these. I I try to pick them up as much as I can. There's another DC Villains um, one shot, which actually ties into that Superman's identity has been revealed. And then on the page right before that is the Powers uh, graphic novel. They're, they've moved to graphic no- novels rather than having a series that doesn't come out within a year of each other. By the way, because it's Powers, this is the second time it's been solicited <laughs> because they, oh, yeah. they couldn't hit the deadline. You know, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that Superman Villains because uh, I didn't mark it, although I'm buying it. Uh, another Joe Hill comics coming out, Plunge Number One, and uh, it's a six-issue black label, which I'm picking up in the aftermath of a devastating tsunami. An exploration vessel known as the Derelith begins sending an automatic distress signal from a remote atoll in the Bering Strait. Problem is, it's been missing for 40 years. So they send out a marine biologist, and remember, you should always listen to a marine biologist. Uh, Mariah Lamb joins the Carpenter Salvage Team to recover the derelict's dead, only to find out that this remote part of the Arctic Circle, the dead have plenty to say to the living. So a six issue. Uh, I think I'm picking up all of Joe Hill's stuff except one, and I may come to regret that I didn't pick up that one. But, uh, yeah, I did. I, I neglected to mention that one. 
Uh, let's see. Going I, I, all I, the I, way back I, to the uh, graphic novels. Yeah, I, you know, and I was disappointed because I thought, you know what? There's not a lot I'm buying. Let's see if there's any graphic novels. There's, there's some that catch my eye, but nothing that I've got to go crazy and buy. Uh, but I will sit back because sometimes Corey ignites something that I, I may have overlooked. Well, one of the things I'm getting is the DMZ Compendium, which is a reprint of the first half of the DMZ series through Vertigo um, in a big, huge trade paperback. It, but, man, there is a lot here that I look and go, this has either been printed already or I'm not interested in. Like uh, Batman like Tales. Tales of the Demon? Yeah, that's been yeah. reprinted. Three or four times now, oh, it's a $50 hardcover. So if you've never uh, picked it up, this is a great way to pick it up. Yeah. Uh, or Doom Patrol Silver Age is on the next page if you've never read those fun issues. There. Another thing I noticed, no omnibuses at all. I mean, come on, people. You, you Corey and I live and die on our omnibuses. Uh, I will be picking up Justice League, the Nail the Complete Collection. Because yeah. for some reason I missed it in the past. This is two different miniseries by Alan Davis, written and drawn, where because a nail got into Mom Pa Kent's truck, they were not the first to pick up Superman. So the Justice League formed without a Superman. And it's Alan Davis, so come on, oh, it's yeah. awesome. And even on the next page, Tales of the Batman by Marv, Marv Wolfman. I've read all these books and I've have them, but if you never have, these are these are fun ones. Yep. One of the things they're doing is they're reprinting uh, Batman stories by creators. Um, they did a Gene Colan one. They've done a couple of Gary Conway ones. They, now they're going to do a Marv Wolfman one. Wolfman uh, did a did um, he didn't do a long run on Batman. He basically did a few stories before Gary Conway took over. Then he did Batman Year Three. So, um, and then that's really about it. There's a Wonder Woman uh, trade paperback. I guess the cheetah might be the villain in the next movie because here's a trade paperback of all the cheetah's stories. And, and we all know cheetahs never win. Hey, you're going to go three weeks without a few dad jokes. you got to learn to suffer with them now. But really, that was it for me for DC. It was a very slow month. Yeah. Um, especially in the trade paperbacks, man. Um, I don't know what's going on with their collected editions. We'll get to that when we get to uh, freaking. All right. Let's see. I am looking at IDW. Yes. There were a couple, couple of things for IDW. For yeah, me. And we might be thinking the same. Are you big on free comics? The untold story of giveaways that fought commies, sold cars and cigars, showed how to buy a TV and avoid VD, and now are saving lives? From Why, yes, I oh, am. Oh, you know, and for the longest time, I collected freebie comics. It, uh, there were some of them. I've sold a lot of them on the Ebays. I purged a few that didn't have much of a value. But I was just... They're just crazy. I, if I could run and find a free comic book, and I like free, I just uh, just absolutely loved them. And now uh, Craig Yo, editor, has uh, put together a, a book, a really cool hardcover book. A lot of his books are just a blast. And uh, this one is one that I'm picking up because uh, it covers just the many thousands of bizarre well, he says bizarro, rare, and fascinating free comic books. They were given out at gas stations, schools, state fairs, clinics, political rallies, churches, shoe stores, cereal boxes. I've talked about the ones I've discovered. Um, it's almost like a history lesson if you if you if you can find those little bits where I was talking about some of these comics. And here, uh, Craig is has taken the idea. I'm not saying he stole it from us. I'm, I'm just I'm not saying that. But here he's taken a brilliant idea and he's, he's, he's put it together as a book with a fascinating title. So I want everybody to go to your local comic book store and say, I am looking for free comics, the untold story of giveaways that fought commies, sold cars and cigars, show how to buy a TV and avoid VD, and now are saving lives hardcover from Yo. And if they look at you stupid, just keep looking at them and go, Yo. Yo. <laughs> Um, the page before that is the Judge Dread 100-page giant, 
which is a really cool idea. I like these. Um, it is IDW's Judge Dread, which is different from the British Judge Judge Dread. Um, this has a new story by Mark Russell, who did Second Coming, Flintstones, um, just one of the writers on the rise, in my opinion. And it also has the first issues of the IDW Dread miniseries Toxic, Under Siege, Blessed Earth, and Mega City Zero, and a preview of upcoming miniseries. And it's five ninety nine for 100 pages of comics. It's a good sampler, lets you know the kind of stuff that they're doing. And um, who doesn't love Judge Dredd? Oh, yeah. I uh, The page after on page 148 is a book that I'm thinking on. It depends on what my total is. It doesn't look like it's going to be much this month. The Mueller Report, the graphic novel. That's all I'm going to say about it, but they're basically the creators are just taking the report and putting it out there. You can decide what you believe on it, but to me, this is an awesome way of doing it because so often you read these reports and my eyes just glaze over because they're written in legalese. Uh, you know, you've heard the spin, what 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 one side says about it, but here's your chance. You read it, you be as my as my friend Jeff Michaela says on his series, the uh, Cinema Judge. You read it, you be the judge. Um, the reason I am picking it up is because it's done by Shannon Wheeler. Of course. Who did um, Ship got- My President Tweets, Too Much Coffee Man. Um, this is another, and for people who think, oh, they're just doing it because, uh, no, they did um, one for the uh, 9-11 Commission report years ago that still sells. And it, it it takes these really complicated reports and does them in a way that you can understand them. The 9-11 Commission report was drawn by Ernie Cologne. And, you know, I, I there's no way I could have read the 9-11 Commission report. I just couldn't have. It was too long, too dense, written like, you know, somebody's uh, thesis. That actually laid it all out better than any news coverage I'd seen. So I'm looking forward to reading this. IDW is reprinting all of the lock and key graphic novels before it starts up on Netflix. Here's your chance, baby. And uh, that's that's what I got from IDW. Marvelous. Now it's time for the 800-pound gorilla in the room. Yep. I use that phrase all the time, and I've learned that a lot of people don't know what it means. Joe, do you know what it oh. means? That means that uh, it's 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 so domineering, so totally. Uh, uh, I'm trying, I think domineering is the best word to use. That it it kind of overshadows everything else. No matter how it? many. You don't hang on a second. I gotta I gotta check something out here. Go go ahead. I was gonna say, Joe. Where does an 800 pound gorilla sleep? Anywhere he or she wants to. Marvel is still 40 uh, percent of the comics market, right here. And um, they've got a number one, and I I didn't. Holy I moly, I got a first. Well, I didn't ordering. believe Wolverine had not had a regular Wolverine comic in over five years. Well, he's been dead, you know. Oh. I, have, I am ordering 17 separate DC titles. I'm only ordering 16 Marvel. Oh. Of course, the one thing that's different is is Marvel has a lot of uh, like Amazing Spider-Man, X-Men, Fantastic Four, Savage Avengers, Tarot. They they got two issues coming out, uh, so a, a little annoying. But yeah, no, Wolverine number one is definitely on it because I've always enjoyed Wolverine and his solo series, and I'm real curious to see how he interacts with this new. Uh, I'm trying to think of a fancy corporate world. Uh, Paradigm. Yeah, Paradigm. 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 That uh, Hickman has set up with the X-Men. And they even talk about it, too. They said, okay, Wolverine's been through a lot. He's been a loner. He's been a killer. He's been a hero. He's been an Avenger. He's been a hell and back. He's been a little cell. One cell. And re- well, okay, we will ignore that. Uh, he's even been dead. Now, as a nation, uh, Krakoa, if I'm saying that right, brings together all mutant kind, he can finally be happy. 
Maybe with his family together and safe is everything he's ever wanted and everything to lose. <sighs> and of course, 5,000 different variant covers, including if you're into a die cast cover that apparently they solicited way back in September because it takes extra time. They haven't done a die cast cover since Ghost Rider. It's die cut, not die cast. Oh, well, forget about it. <laughs> So variant covers galore, uh, and if you if you want to go check out some of Wolverine's other first issues, you can uh, do the probably one of the better ones, Wolverine, the uh, the mini series that came out by uh, Claremont and Frank Miller, and of course the other big Wolverine series that was started by Claremont and Bushima that uh, started out with oh my god Wolverine's got a oh this sucks who is this uh, where he hung out in uh, Mandarpur. Uh, yeah, when it's like, this is not uh, the Wolverine we want. Although it got better. And it then, of course... A, it was the Wolverine I wanted because it was drawn by John Buscema. Oh, all I, I said was human, didn't I? Yeah, no, not too bad. Uh, or you could go get Marvel Tales Wolverine that has uh, reprints some of his classic stuff. So they're going all out on Wolverine. And uh, it should be interesting. I'm, I'm real curious to see where they go with it. So I'll, I'll play along. Um. We've also got a crossover between the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. Now, I'll be buying this as a trade, but I want to point it out because it's written by Chip Zdarsky, who I like a lot, drawn by Terry Dodson, who I really like a lot. But I am going to be getting the uh, variant covers because they are drawn by Megan Hetrick, an artist I really like to the point where I she was blowing out a bunch of her older prints, and I, I bought a bunch of them. Good man. Got to cover up them omnibus from people like me who come over and liberally borrow them. Hey, well, hey, that yes. one's low, Barry. Cover it up with a good print. I'm going to buy the actual series, so I will probably talk about it as it comes out. But we'll be, we'll be revisiting it. I figure, you know, for four issues, I'll jump in. The, the gist of the sand is, hey, it's time for Franklin Richards to come home. And I'm pretty sure the FF are going to have something to say about that. To me, I'm like, you know what? I don't think you want to mess with the Fantastic Four. But, you know, this is the type of stuff that I'm real curious how that's going to play out in the in the New Mutant world. It's something that should kind of reverberate through all Marvel comics, unless, of course, like your Doctor Strange. I don't see why it would bother Doctor Strange. He's got other things he's worrying about. But uh, it could be kind of interesting. And there, even to that point, I'm not buying it. Although I might, uh, there's a giant size X Men Jean Grey and Emma Frost where they're going and they're they're doing some X Tales designed to showcase some of the Marvel's best artists. Now they said it's a first of five, so I'm gonna bet I'm doing the opposite. Well, actually, I'll do it like Corey. I'm probably gonna wait for the graphic novel on this one because the art looks good. Hickman's writing them, and uh, I figured it'd be easier just to read in one graphic novel than. Uh, Wait for all five. Um, Iron Man 2020 continues, but the um, true believers for Iron Man 2020 are, are it's another month of them. So we get the uh, first appearance of Pepper Potts, the uh, Iron first issue of Machine Man, the miniseries, which had Iron Man 2020 in it. Um, the Wolverine issue that introduced Albert and LCD. And I'm sorry, when I look at that cover, it just reminds me of, yeah, that was when Mark Silvestri was drawing it and I had no clue what was going on. Um, first appearance of Jocasta in the Avengers. I don't want to know what that is. And that, was the, a, uh, that was a quick review of, uh, of uh, <laughs> the uh, Wolverine. <laughs> And Invincible Iron Man, the uh, it says Iron Machine number one. It's I think it's the first appearance of James Rhodes. So um, I also was not going to pick this up until Don McGregor talked about it. Marvel's Voices. It's a one shot, uh, forty pages. Um, lists a whole bunch of creators. Uh, Don McGregor said he is writing a either a two-page short story or an essay and they've basically gone back to some of marvel's creators to say hey do you have something to say about these classic stories that were tied into real world events so um they do not do a good job of selling it here 
No, I mean, I kind of overlooked it. Cause so many times I see these one shots and I'm kind of like, uh, unless a name really grabs me or the, the it's written well or they're actually previewing some artwork, kind of like Image and uh, Dark Horse do. Marvel. Uh, or it's a character that I just naturally love, such as uh, forward up to page 47, Gwen Stacy, one of five. Uh, again, a mini series. And this is dealing with uh, amazing fan or uh, Gwen Stacy, the original before she met her demise. So some of the some of the things she uh, did. Uh, untold, I guess you would, how would you say it? untold tales of the Stacy. Uh, but I believe these are stories before she met Peter Parker. Yeah, she's um, yeah yeah. Yeah, because she never before told origin of Gwen Stacy, top of her class, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's um, I I am going to point out that this is a retcon that I I am solely in favor of. Yeah. So we'll see and we'll see what they do with it. They are giving Gwen Stacy a personality because if you go back and you read the original Gwen Stacy stories, when Dicko was drawing her, she was just bitchy. Yeah. Just. Bitchy. And then um, after uh, John Romita took over, that personality kind of went away and she became the typical Marvel girl of, oh my gosh, what's wrong with Peter? Every yeah. Day. yeah. Which, and then she she got pregnant by Norm Osborn and went off to France that, to have that, the that, baby. That, and uh, that, that was, was that a, that oh, was that that, was that, that Mopied? Yeah, I mean, I know it's a DC character, but you know it can whack enough. Yeah, it happened. I'm pretty sure it happened. Or is it just one of those things we don't speak of? Like when yes, uh, we don't speak of it. Like the plane blew up in the middle of the sky, and and uh, we thought Quinn Stacy was dead, or when a Hulk no, Mary jumped. Jane. Mary, Mary Jane. Jane. Was... Oh yeah, yeah. Or like when the Hulk jumped through a a plane, and so everybody on board was miraculously saved. I I don't think that happened, but so um. Yeah, uh, I like that they're basically going back and giving Gwen Stacy a personality because the uh, Ghost Spider stuff is doing so well and the character is so popular. They're kind of wanting to say, okay, let's kind of change change it so that she's not, you know, oh my gosh, Peter has the flu. I hope he'll survive. <laughs> or maybe they'll explain why she was so harsh to Peter when she first saw him. Well, There's a lot we could do here. We could, you know, you could go back and just, do, I don't know, do a miniseries called Trouble, where they they're both together and somebody gets pregnant. And uh, wait a minute, never mind. I do you got anything else from Marvel? Because I want to jump to Star Wars. Um, nothing else of their regular series jumped out at me as new and exciting. Yeah, just, and I mean, I'm you know, fine. Stuff they're doing is the stuff they're doing. And for me. I'm I'm getting hyped up. I I didn't. I may regret not buying it, and I can always go back and get it because Star Wars is taking place now between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and the Darth Vader Star Wars tie into that kind of got my attention, and it deals with uh, just how po'd Vader is that uh, Luke, what happened to him with Luke. And uh, he's going out to find more about Luke and Vader's finding shocking new challenges from his own dark past. And I'm a, you know, I'm a big Vader fan and I'm kind of curious to see how this, I don't know if I'm going to do this as uh, graphic novels or do it as an actual series. So, but uh, both the Star Wars are now got my attention again. And I imagine eventually they'll come to a close at this and then they'll jump into whatever. I mean, the Star Wars universe obviously ain't dead. I mean, look at Mandalorian. So hopefully we can uh, – I mean, there's so much more they could cover in Star Wars. I'm just very excited to see where uh, these two series are going. And uh, now we get to uh, the trade paperbacks and hardcovers. Oh, I'm and, sorry. Uh, Once again, I screwed up because I, I wrote these out of order. Oh. Uh, uh, Conan, Battle for the Serpent Crown miniseries. 
I'm liking, I'm not big on the original Conan. I, it's probably just a brain fart of mine because I read so many of them and they, I didn't read the good ones. I read some of the, the clack. Conan comes to town. Conan sees Wizard. Wizard pisses off Conan. Conan overpowers Wizard, kills, walks to next town. Um, but I kind of like this idea of, I, I love Savage Avengers with Conan in it. And I like the idea, here's Conan wandering through the Marvel Universe as is. Although you'd think he would put on a freaking shirt after seeing everybody the way he is. But anyways, here he wanders into uh, uh, Vegas. And as we all know, I think, wasn't that where Mephisto was uh, trapped from yes. the last time talking around? So we'll see what happens there. But as long as he just kind of wands around kind of doing the, uh, the lone Conan thing, I'll, I'll pick up, especially if it's in a miniseries, I'll pick these up because I think they'll be kind of fun. And I know the first one, is it, is it even out yet? No. Okay, Not so the first one's... Murphy. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I looking forward to that. And I actually, I'm going to sit back and listen to Corey now because I have no, nothing in the Marvel graphic novels I'm looking to buy. Um, the first omnibus that's new is really confusing to me. And I'll explain why. It reprints all 31 issues of Fear, which then became Adventures into Fear. Now, the first, I think, nine issues were reprints of 50s horror books. Then it became a Man-Thing series, and then Man-Thing spun off into his own book, and it became Morbius the Living Vampire. Now, um, there's already a Marvel Monster Bus, which reprints all the Kirby and Ditko monster stories. There's a Man-Thing Omnibus that reprints all the Man-Thing stories. I got that one, yeah. There's an upcoming Morbius, Morbius Omnibus. Yeah. And, and we all Is there anybody who's going to pick this up? Is there anybody who's going to pick this up? Because, oh, well, I want these Man-Thing stories, but I only want some of them. I want the Morbius stories, but I only want some of them. I want the uh, monster enough, series, the nether but I want the reprints. You are giving short shrift to Thog the Nether Spawn. Which is or Thog the Monster Bus. Oh, well, okay, then I have no reason to buy this. If you do not already have these stories, Ditko is Strange. King size hardcover reprints Steve Ditko's entire run of Doctor Strange. Wait, that's the one I bought at uh, Steve Brown's, isn't it? No. You bought the uh, the omnibus that reprints it. This is the uh, king oh. size. Oh, okay. If I didn't already have these stories in three different formats, I'd buy this. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's probably online too. <laughs> but not you know two feet tall. Um, the Marvel portfolio, Stanley Art Germ Lau. Art Germ is a artist who has just kind of exploded out of nowhere. Um, I don't know if he's done a regular series. He just basically does covers, and he's become hugely popular. And Marvel's already putting out a portfolio. This is 12 pages. What? Yeah, it's a portfolio. It's 50 bucks. Oh, wow. I haven't seen a portfolio in years. They were really big when I was starting collecting in the late 70s, early 80s. So it's um, 12 gorgeous full-color reproductions of some of his most iconic works, um, all in a stunning hardcover case. That could be a future collectible item, because I don't know if many people would buy portfolios in this day and age. Um, they are reprinting the X-Men in a weird way, and I did not know about it. I Because, you know, last month they did, okay, here's all the first issues in a trade paperback. Well, now... It's here's all the second issues in a trade paperback. Here's all the third issues in a trade paperback. And I'm going to pick it up this way because I like the trade paperback format better than regular comics. And if I would have known they were doing this, I would have went, oh, I'll buy it that way all along. But I'm going to buy it this way. And I don't know how long it will keep up. That's what I'm suspicious it's a of. Cool idea. I, yeah, I, I go with that. I'm, I don't think I'm going to do it. I want to. But I'm also very suspicious on how long they're going to do it. Because I'd hate to suddenly, okay, we're going to stop at five. And, well, geez, we're already up on, uh, what, what X, I'm looking at my X-Men number. We're already seven. up on seven. So that means now i got to go scramble and find what I'm missing. 
So, uh, who knows? Maybe when I see that number one, I'll, I'll change my tune. But uh, kudos for trying something different. They've got uh, two more of the Legends of Marvel trade paperbacks. Those reprint those one-shots by uh, older creative teams. So the first one is Avengers. You've got uh, the, let's see, Incredible Hulk Last Call, Avengers Loki Unleashed, Thor the Worthy, Captain America and the Invaders Bahamas Triangle, and the X-Men one is Wolverine Exit Wounds, Alpha Flight True North, and New Mutants War Children. New Mutants War Children is brilliance just brilliance um chris claremont and bill sinkevich doing a new mutant story and it's better than they would have done it in the past because they're both so much better at what they do now oh you know what i do like what marvel's doing when they solicit like the immortal hulk which i'm buying in comic but they do list all the previous graphic novels Yes. Which is brilliant. And they give you the code, which is all important if you really want to be nice to your comic shop. Uh, a, if they don't have them on the shelf, but say, here's the order code uh, to order it in. So, because I'm looking even on Star Wars, because I bought the Star Wars comics for a while, then I let it drop off. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe I will pick up these issues that I'm missing. And here are all the graphic novels just lined up, ready to go. And Squirrel Girl, I've got time. I'm waiting for the Squirrel Girl omnibus myself, but. Uh, I'm, I'm all, I, again, kudos. I, I may not have anything I'm buying this month, Marvel, but I am paying attention, sort of. Um, another book, another couple of Black Widow books. First is Black Widow by Wade and Samney. This is the series by Mark Wade and Chris Samney, all 12 issues. This was fantastic, fantastic stuff. And um, if you've not read these stories, pick it up. They're the guys who did such a great run on... Uh, Daredevil, and I hope that they continue to do work together. And then the last Black Widow book is Black Widow Marvel Team Up, which reprints all of her appearances in Marvel 2 and 1, one issue, um, the appearances in Marvel Team Up, and then the Team Up stories for Marvel Comics Presents. Basically, they're getting Black Widow stuff out there for um, when you, for when the movie hits in, what is it, May? Yeah. Um, Epic Collection, uh, another Captain America one that reprints another big chunk of the uh, Mark Grunewald series, if you're into that. Excalibur uh, reprints a big chunk of the stuff that was written and drawn by Alan Davis. And Wolverine is um, Wolverine 68 through 70, plus some um, miniseries and other issues. If you're buying the uh, Epic Collections, remember they are keeping the Epic Collections in print. So when they go out of print, they just reprint them. And that was it for me for Marvel. Cool. And now we go back to previews. We'll All right, let me get now. Oh, oh. Oof. All right, who's next? Because I flipped the page. Oh, dynamite! There is one thing I'm going to pick up, and I had to... Wait a minute, where are we? Oh, I take that back. There's just a couple things I'm going to point out. Uh, I always put kudos because I do like the... Uh, uh, when they, re they call it facsimile at DC. At Dynamite, they call it replica editions. And the Dynamite has done... Number one, number two of Vampirella, here's number three. And I'm like, you know, if you're going to keep doing it onward, go for it. You know, the only thing with these is that they are, I, I, I got to look, I don't know if they're just the red limited foil edition or the limited platinum foil because they're very, very high priced. But if they just did them as like regular $5, $10 comics, I would definitely want to pick them up. Uh, to keep going. And down below, they do have a new printing of, of Vampirella 1 at six ninety nine. So, you know, yeah, that's kind of a new idea. 3 has a standard for six ninety nine. Okay. Okay. So, I, I mean, there it is. Standard right there. Small print. I, you know, getting old in my young age. Uh, again, if you're an Army of Darkness fan, there's a new miniseries, a new series starting. Uh, James Bond fans, check out page 176, 178. There's uh, a couple of fun things there for you. Not only uh, the complete Warren Ellis omnibus, and you had me at Warren Ellis, but uh, a couple series going on. And 
If you're a Charlie's Angels Bionic Woman fan, you got looking for something retro, a little late for Christmas, but you got some people you know that like that stuff, Trade Paperbacks coming out. These are series that I bought in uh, the comic form. But yeah, these are some trade paperbacks coming out of stuff that uh, I thought was interesting that I enjoyed when it first came out. And uh, here's your, your second chance, so to speak, to uh, pick it up if you want. And some licensed products. Like you, you, Somebody's got to be an Army of Darkness fan out there. Check it out. They've got a number one coming up and lots of fun variants, too. Next, we go to Boom! Boom, chug-a-lug-a-lug-a. Boom, chug a lug a Boom, which is uh, really starting to have their original series take off um, almost out of nowhere, it seems. So, uh, let's see. They've got a new one starting, Alienated, by Simon yep, Spurrier, yep. which is being pushed as a kind of a science fiction thriller for people who like Something is Killing the Children, which is a big hit for them. Yeah. I will uh, – I, I second it, that one. Uh, I'll just read it right off the page. Read along if you want, page 196. Three teenagers, each an outcast in their own way, stumble upon an unearthly entity as it's born. As they bond over the shared secret the, and the creature's incredible abilities, it becomes clear to the teenagers that their cute little pet is a super predator in the making, and it is in need of prey. So it's six issues to begin with, and uh, you heard it here first. I mean, if, if you were listening to us, you would have heard about how hot we thought something is killing the children would have been. Well, here's your chance as well, because on page three, I'm sorry, 203 is the volume one of the first run. Something is killing the children. So I would uh, definitely recommend picking that up. On page 194, uh, We Serve the People, original graphic novel hardcover. And I'm just going to read it. This is by uh, Emily Burrell. In China, an entire generation's most formative years took place in remote rural areas when city kids were sent to the countryside to become uh, rusticated youth and partake in Mao's mandated great leap forward. And this is a tale where the uh, creator shares her mother's true experience during the down to the countryside movement in the early 1970s. I, I love history. This is kind of witness history. You know, I love Mouse, uh, uh, the aforementioned uh, Mueller report. This to me is just fascinating because it's a, a slice of life in a country that, you know, I mean, I was a kid in the 70s, but to know what was going on and what it was really like, you know, because for us it was, oh, look what those wacky communists are doing now. They're evil. We got to keep an eye on them. Maybe it wasn't all that bad. I mean, maybe it was. I don't know, but here's a chance to find out, and I definitely uh, recommend this one. Anything else? Boom on your eyes? See nope, can, nothing right? came out to, to – nothing jumped out at me. Nothing boom. boomed out at you? I'm, I am going to be picking up that Warren Ellis omnibus because uh, his James Bond stories were fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that that actually. I mean, you said omnibus. You could you could go like just say, "Hey, here's Wonder Pony omnibus." Oh, we're on it. Wonder Pony, by the way, is on page two hundred. Uh, again, not my age group, but you might have a daughter, young child that might like that magical adventure of friends, fun, and fillies. And now we get to the rest. And of the, the rest. <sighs> All right, take it from the top. Page two twenty eight. And this is, I think, where we jump back and forth. I, I recommended this one. It, it caught my attention, but I didn't buy it. Here's your second chance, folks. Vampire State Building from Ablaze on page. Well, of course, they don't put pages on there. Uh, well, there's two. You can look at their ad, or you can go to page 228 where they actually order it. It's, it's a horror series from the artists of Walking Dead. And let's see, get ready to be bitten from the first full color page. Terry Fisher's a young soldier on the verge of being sent away for active military duty and is going to meet his friends at the top of the Empire State Building for a farewell party. But suddenly a legion of vampire attacks the skyscraper and massacres its occupants. Hounded in the 102nd floors, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Hounded in the 200, 102 floors that have become a deadly trap, Terry must take 
device of action to save himself and his friends in the city of New York. You know, that sounds like a damn good movie. Hmm. So anyways, here's your chance, your second chance to jump on board. Don't miss out like I did. Don't miss out. At least try not to. Yeah, try not to. Um, I would jump all the way to page 246. There is a trade paperback of Second Coming by Mark Russell and Richard Pace. Um, Joe and I have been praising this book a lot. It is Jesus Returns and becomes the roommate of a Superman-type character, and hijinks ensue. This is an excellent series, beautiful art, a um, lot of philosophy behind what's going on in it. And um, I still remember when I was a kid, one of my pastors said, you know, when this was when the TV preachers were starting to become popular, he said, if Jesus were to come to earth now and see what people are doing with the church, he would never stop throwing up. <laughs> and this kind of takes the Jesus comes back and says, hey, wait a minute, you guys have got my message wrong. Um, they also, the second run of Captain Ginger, which was their uh, Star Trek-like series except it's a future when cats have become humanoid and oh, wow. if, if you're a cat person this is fantastic it's uh written by Stuart moore drawn by june brigman whose art i love um she actually did comics in the 80s then moved over to commercial art and comic strips and has come back to do this she also came back and did that power pack um, one shot with her and Louise Simonson that I like so much. Um, really, anything that Ahoy puts out, I recommend. There's there's such a great company, and the people behind it, they, they're kind of doing vertigo with humor. And, of course, you know, it's Tom Pyre and Stuart Moore, who both worked at, at Vertigo forever. So um, those are always, anything from Ahoy is going to be recommended by me. Corey, do you got a dollar seventy-five? Not on me. Do you read Aspen books? No, I don't. Well, for a dollar seventy-five, you can go get the Aspen primers. There's let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Twenty-five cents a piece. You have Fathom primer, uh, executive assistant Iris primer. So if you really want to jump on board and you want to see, is this something you may be interested in? Here's your chance, $1.75. They're reoffering all their primers on page 265. And, uh, you know, if I was a, when I had crazy comics, I used to buy these and just give them to my subscribers. You know, they weren't necessarily around as a, uh, when I had hot comics. But I think this is just a brilliant idea. Take them, put them on the freebie rack, give them away when free comic book day comes around. But just a way to get people exposed to it, to try it. Heck, slap your store's name on the back and leave them around the libraries and bus stops. But I'm giving away these ideas for free. I, I just should, you know, I should shut up, but I'm not going to because uh, I got to go back a couple pages to Archie because there's there's uh, a couple things going on. Corey, you like to roam? You like to go yeah. to the Love Shack? Oh, yeah. yeah. The B-52s are beating Archie. Yay! And I, I think it's a one-shot, isn't it? I, I can't it's on page 259. It's a rock and roll adventure for the ages as Archie and his friends cross paths with the B-52s. So, uh, and this, of course, they, they've had Archie meets Kiss, Archie meets Ramon. So this is kind of an epic, yeah, it is a one shot. So uh, this would be one of those things that uh, I buy tons of and, and give away to your friends that uh, like B-52. Uh, I, I will mention on the Previous page, 258, is a book that may, some people may have overlooked under Andrew McNeil, Snug, a collection of comics about dating your best friend. This is from Katana Chetwind. It's her second book uh, that basically uh, includes 50% new, never-before-shared comics, and it's a celebration of the quirks and peculiarities. Hey, I said it right. I think I better take a drink. Uh, every one of us has when we uh, find our so-called significant other. It's kind of like matching puzzle pieces and stuff. So 
kind of a little romantic type strip that I uh, I've enjoyed, and uh, I recommend the book here just because, like I, they said, it's it's a lot of new stuff. So if you've never seen it before, it could be a lot of fun. You did skip the one thing that I love from the classic Archie line on oh. page uh, 262. Okay. Another of their thousand page digests. Um, this is a thousand pages of Archie comics for 15 bucks. Dude, this is awesome. Uh, how can you delicately put it? Bathroom reading. <laughs> Set that right next to your Reader's Digest. You're all ready for your weekend number twos. I'd say. I keep one in, uh, you know, I work at the group home a lot lately. I always keep one in my uh, carry bag so that, okay, well, you know, it's pretty quiet. There are seven, eight-page stories. They're well-drawn. They're entertaining and um, can pick it up and put it down a lot. I also get these for kids. And you give a kid a 1,000-page comic, uh, they are busy for at least, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. Corey, are you a she fan? I am not, but I hear good things about the show on um, Netflix. And uh, there are a couple of people I follow on Instagram, huge, huge fans, and do costumes of the characters all the time. So if I ever get time, I will check it out. <laughs> well, there is a first ever epic graphic novel based on stories by the showrunner, Nicole Stevenson, on page 303. This is under graphics. And uh, again, I'm not big on the She-Ra. I'm, uh, I'm interested. Who knows? Maybe when I'm recovering, I'll get a chance to watch it. But this is the type of thing, if you've got a She-Ra fan in your house or a good friend, you can either get the soft cover or the hard cover, depending on how good a friend they are. So just, again, another licensed property to point out. You know, I'm not getting it, but you might have a She-Ra f- uh, fan that would appreciate it. Let's see, I'm flipping through here, and ah, there we go, on page 310 is Knights of the Dinner Table, of course, and another bundle of trouble. Did I skip Fantagraphics? Uh, you I did, because we're way, that's way up in the case. Kenzer must be running a little late on their books, because a lot of these are resolicitations, so if you haven't seen them uh, in the last couple months, they are... Uh, you know, eventually Diamond will say, hey, just stop and you got to kind of catch up because you're too far ahead. So, but they're still chugging away. It's still one of my favorite comics. All right. Yes, there's a reason I wanted to bring up Fantagraphics. I have talked in the past about the Zap Comics uh, Collected Edition, which had an unprinted issue. And we actually finally saw one at Dreamhaven when we were out and about on Black Friday, and now I see why it's so much, but still, it's like, good Lord, I'm not paying that much for it. But it's not just one book, it's like six hardcovers in a case. But if you want the unprinted issue, Zap Comics number 16, they do have it available now. Oh, sweet. $14.99, um, so you can complete your collection of Zap Comics because there will be no more issues. Uh, many of the artists who contributed to Zap have passed away. And this was, for many of them, their last work. There's also, if you're looking for older stuff because, hey, you know, uh, there's there's uh, a big hole in how many comics I'm getting. Yep. Willie and Joe, the World War II years, Willie and Joe was a comic strip by uh, Bill Maudlin that was beloved by the soldiers because it it touched on what they dealt with. Um, it's very famous to the point where on Veterans Day, Charles Schultz would remember how uh, Snoopy would say he's going to the bar to get a root beer with Bill Maudlin. Mm-hmm. That's why. He actually, Bill Maudlin did a, a famous strip where uh, the two characters were walking alongside a Snoopy. And uh, that's got to be a high point for Charles Schultz to, to have been able to do that strip with them. It's often reprinted on, uh, is it Vets Day? or Yeah. And then right next to it is Strange Suspense, the Steve Ditko archives. These are very, very early Steve Ditko stories um, that have not been printed anywhere else. So if you're a Ditko fan, but you haven't picked this up, might be a good time to drop it in your drop it in your uh, order because there's not a there's lot. Not out. a lot of other stuff. Yeah, I'm going to jump forward to page 338 
Under Squarefish is a, a real book. It's a novel. What's up with that? Comics will break your heart. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm a sap for this stuff, but I was just reading the description. It's by Faith Aaron Hicks. A sweet, funny, contemporary teen romance for the inner geek and all of us from a fan favorite graphic novelist. Uh, let's see. Miriam's family should be rich. Her grandfather was the co-creator of a smash hit comic series, The Tomorrow Man. But he sold his rights to the series to his co-creator in the 60s for nothing. And now that that's what uh, Miriam has, nothing. And practically nothing to look forward to either. She can't afford college, can't get family keep their head above their heads. And uh, it gets more complicated. A cute boy shows up in town, turns out to be the grandson of the man who def frauded Miriam's grandfather, heir to the uh, Tomorrow Man fortune. It's kind of a Romeo Juliet tale, shenanigans and shoot. Yeah, yeah, you're tugging my heartstrings. I'm picking it up. So, I, I and it's pros. I mean, I had to look twice because first I saw comics break your heart. Okay, that sounds interesting. Wait, this is a real book. We, we, we can do that. Read real books. Cool. Um, I'd like you to flip back to page 334. All right, 334. Sanctum Productions has been reprinting the shadow uh, pulps in kind of the same size, but, you know, nicer packaging and everything. Two or three novels per, per, per book. Well, it has come to an end. Shadow Novel 151, Final Issue Spectacular. This has four novels in it as well as historical commentary by Will Murray, who uh, you may know as somebody who contributes a lot to Alter Ego. He also writes Doc Savage novels. He writes Tarzan novels. He he wrote the uh, Remo Williams Destroyer novels. He's big and uh, wrote the Spider novel that I reviewed a while back. And Anthony Tolan, who is a colorist for DC, but also huge, huge pulp fan and has worked in pulp restoration for years. This is the final issue of a massive uh, reprinting uh, plan. And even if, you know, I picked the, I've always said that it's a little too expensive. It's 20 bucks for stuff. I would have bought them if they were, you know, regular paperback size at a better price. But I am going to get this last issue just for the historical um, part of it. And I, it's one of those two that I always sometimes I'd pick up because they sold really well on the Ebays. Because I don't think a lot of stores carry these. So you got fans looking for them. And uh, I mean, you just price them cover price. If you can get them for less, you know, that's how you make money on the Ebays. But uh, so, yeah, these are one of those. I know when uh, I closed the big shop, I had a number of these left behind. Uh, from either subscribers who couldn't get in before I had the change of ownership or just ones that I bought that were on the shelves and, you know, stuck them back in the graphic novels. So kind of kind of interesting. And like you said, it's it's a historical type thing. If you're looking for something new, page 358, uh, another one from the Vault Comics, Finger Guns. Two troubled teenagers discover they can manipulate emotions by firing finger guns. There will be laughs. There will be tears. There will be uncomfortable teen feelings and angst. Oh, yeah, and chaos. So much chaos. I don't know why, but, you know, I think it's because I had had two teenage daughters that I, I tend to gravitate towards stories like these. But uh, it'll be fun to watch. I mean, they can't all be like Money Shots, which is right across from it, issue five, which the first issue I read. Oh, was that funny. Now, Joe, would you like to try these Vault comics? I would. Would you like to try them at a price that you decide sure would you like to try them at a price that you decide and half of that money goes to charity oh dude you, you're like you it's like you know me head on over to vault's webpage. they have uh three different packs of their series and you can order pay your own price their digital comics Whatever you pay, half goes to the charities that they have listed on the site. They announced that they did. Uh, there's a lot of discussion on comic piracy going on online. And they said, well, you know what? We're going to fight piracy by making this stuff available. Pay your own price. And it was such a success that they've created three big sampler packs. So if you want to see what the whole deal about Vault Comics is about, head on over to their website. That's what I did. And um, now I've got uh, a whole bunch of their early 
early issues so I can see what series I like, what ones I'm not interested in. I also want to direct you to page 348 in Titan Books, The Novels. First off, there is a novelization of the Bloodshot movie, which I guess is actually a real thing and coming out in the spring. I, you know, I'd heard from Valiant for, what, like a decade now that, oh, there's going to be movies of our characters. Well, I guess one of them got made. Um, there is also a Firefly Big Damn Hero, which is the first original Firefly novel. So if you are a Firefly, Firefly fan... Here you go. It's a novel, and I've been... How long have I been saying they should be doing novels of that? Since the series got canceled. Um, also, if you're looking for stuff to pick up, again, because this is a, a uh, lesser month, there is the um, new printing of Kirby and Lee Stuff Said, which is actually a special issue of the Jack Kirby... Uh, collector magazine and a book that uh, I cannot recommend enough comic book implosion oh yeah comic yeah, book I read implosion that. tells the story of the DC implosion which in the uh, mid 70s there was going to be the DC explosion where they were going to take on Marvel by flooding the stands themselves. Um, prices of paper were going up, so they decided rather than, you know, jump jump the price five cents every year, they would go to 40 cents and have 40-page comics. So there'd be a main story and a backup story. And they hired up a lot of new people. And then there was the 78 Blizzard, which was so bad... Magazines and comics could not get to newsstands. And there were stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of unsold magazines and comics. And DC uh, had to start canceling stuff because sales were so bad they couldn't afford to print. Uh, magazines, uh, a lot of magazines went out of business at the same time. But there was a uh, thought that DC would go under. This is also... Uh, the, the time when Detective Comics was canceled for a weekend. I love this book because this is my, when I was just starting to buy comics. And I started mostly as a Marvel zombie, but eventually I would get into DC and there were, it's just kind of fascinating to read what was going on while I was, you know, I was oblivious to this. Nowadays, somebody farts on the fifth floor of Time Warner and everybody on the internet knows about it. Uh, but back then, all this was, who knew what was going on, you know? Uh, obviously, these guys did, but uh, it the information just wasn't available. And, of course, a lot of it was oblivious to the 12-year-old me who only cared about why there wasn't a Logan Run 7 out on the newsstand. Versus no, there was, was a 7. Eight. It was 8. It wasn't I was waiting eight. for 8. Yeah, yeah. Uh, boy, if I could only time travel. Uh, Corey, would you jump back to page uh, 260, I'm sorry, 236 and read the title? 236. And while you're doing that, I'll, I'll, I'll read, I'll do the, the uh, segue again. Oh, boy, if I could only time travel. The man who fucked up time. Yeah, I, I'm, again, I my notes are just all over the place here. But uh, this is one that I'm, I'm picking up because I love a good time story. And I would be the guy who fucked up time. Uh, Sean Bennett is just your everyday ordinary worker in a high-tech lab with a prototype time machine, and yeah, he's got the same temptations any of us would have about going back in time just a bit to correct mistakes of the past, right old wrongs. So he meets a version of himself from the future, encourages him to do just that. He takes the temporal plunge, and uh, yeah, you can guess what happens next. Did you read the book's title? Yep, all of time is fucked up. I would probably just, I, I mean, if I did to time travel, I would go find... And again, mostly like comics, toys, collectibles, like that Beatles effed up cover from yesterday, today, the baby doll cover. And find a vault somewhere that I knew still survived in today's world and just go there. Okay, I'm paying you cash to cover this through the year 2020 and put stuff in it. And then, of course, here'd be my current day opening up the vault going, whoa, look at all this stuff. I better go buy this. You know, not enough to mess up time, but again, you make up your own time rules. So I'm kind of, 
I'm, I'm looking forward to see how this one uh, plays out. And because Aftershock usually will print this in a graphic novel, you could probably wait and do it. But I'm, uh, I'll just pick it up and uh, go along with it. Let's see. You're that in is the, all I had. You're into manga, right, Corey? Yeah. You're into Transformers, right? No. Okay. Well, if you are, page 238 has from Viz Media, Transformers the manga. I'm not buying it, but this is, again, something to uh, show to your friends if they like Transformers because they're doing the classic Transformer manga available in English for the first time. So I thought I would, I would point that out to people. Uh, now... Corey, I, I want you to flip your book and go to page 49 in the toy department. Got that toys! Yeah, yeah. And, and guess what I am buying? Baby Yoda. Uh, uh, let's I'm see. At that point, you could make a killing if you had Baby Yoda toys now. The Stan Lee six inch, six inch action figure. You got that right, true believer. I've seen this popping up all over Facebook and things, and it's in the previews. I'll just buy it and get it through my uh, my uh, friendly neighborhood comic shop and or service. So, yep, here's your chance to get it. I mean, they've been talking about this sucker for ages, so now it's available. Uh, and that's it for me. I, I better just double look because I've really been scattered shot this one. Let's see, blah, blah, blah. Da, da, da. Yeah, I think that's it. Well, while you're looking, you know who does know what they want? Oh, my wife, that's for sure. These guys, our sponsors. And remember, our sponsors through the end of the year are the charities and people looking for help that we believe in. Normally in this space, we have advertising. But for the rest of the year in the spirit of giving, instead, we're giving our advertising time over to fundraisers to help people who are in need. And the best place to help comic book creators who are in need is the HeroInitiative.org. The Hero Initiative raises money and helps creators with medical issues, finding work, um, fighting homelessness. Um, these are comic creators who may be switching careers, may have fallen on hard times, or they may have worked in the business for a long time. And as you know, comic book uh, companies, everything there is... Um, you're paid by the page. It's not a salary. It's not benefited. It's not with a retirement. So this is how we can help the creators who've made our lives better by their work. Head on over to the HeroInitiative.org in order to donate or buy items. Artist Tom Lyle, who drew tons of comics over the years, including uh, a run on Spider-Man during the Spider-Clone saga, uh, helped create the Tim Drake Robin, passed away recently, leaving his spouse with medical bills. You can donate by going to GoFundMe.com and looking up Tom Dash Lyle to donate to help pay off those medical bills from his hospital stay. If you are a wrestling fan, you know who ODB is. ODB is a Minnesota gal who got out of wrestling and got into the food truck business. One morning she woke up and her food truck had burned to the ground. She is running a fundraiser at Indiegogo. So go to Indiegogo.com, put in Help ODB Get Cooking Again, and you can purchase her wonderful uh, sauces, autograph pictures, all funds go toward helping her buy a new food truck so she can start her business again. These are people who need your help. If you know someone who needs help or has a fundraiser, please let us know by sending an email to solitaire rose network at gmail.com subject advertising. And after the first of the year, when we get back to regular ads, you can buy an ad too. Again, it's Solitaire Rose Network at gmail.com. Subject advertising. Thanks. And this isn't the only podcast I do. Oh, no, no, no. Heavens, no. Oh, heavens, no. I do other ones like this. The Solitaire Rose Radio Network has all sorts of podcasts for you. There's, of course, Crazy Comics and Stories, where myself and Crazy Joe Ryder get together once a week to talk comics. We review comics, we talk about upcoming comics, we talk about comics history, anything that has to do with comics we're going to talk about. We also have Series in Review, where we review series and kind of give a DVD commentary of past comics that we've enjoyed. 
There is also Solitaire Rose Radio. Solitaire Rose Radio is my solo show where I discuss upcoming comics, past comics, comics history, and interview comics creators. These are all at crazycomics.solitairerose.com. There's also the podcast I'm proudest of. That's Novelcast, where I take the novels that I have written and turn them into audiobooks. That's at novels.solitairerose.com. Over at Bad Advice, myself, Dan Moore, and Wolfie B. Bad take your questions and give you bad advice. It's at badadvice.solitairerose.com. Now, don't think that I'm doing all the podcasts, because there's also Scrabbling Across the West by Dave Cofell and Stephanie Cofell. Dave is a musician, and Stephanie is his wife. They travel the country performing music and playing Scrabble over at scrabbling.solitairerose.com. And finally, the newest member of the Solitaire Rose Radio Group. That's Fantastic Forecast, where myself and host of For the Love of Comics, Adam Vermillion, go over the series The Fantastic Four, four issues at a time. That's available at fantasticforecast.solitairerose.com. If you would like to advertise on any of these podcasts, you can. Just email me at, at solitairerosenetwork at gmail.com. Thanks. Sorry. Not only that, I am over at PWInsider.com every Wednesday night writing up all elite wrestling. And if you are an elite member, and you damn well should be if you want to know anything about wrestling, you can listen to the audio recap that is done. Sometimes me alone and sometimes with Anthony Pyrus. So head on over to PWInsiderElite.com and start a subscription. Joe! Will you be doing any eBay while you are all drugged up? No. I will actually shut her down. I thank everybody who's uh, bought things for me. And I, I did a last-minute 15% sale and blew out a lot of fun things. Uh, let me uh, find the list here and just uh, name off some of the things. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, let's see. A Kiss Zombies, number one. Uh, another uh, Kiss tie-in from... Uh, Dynamite, I actually found the 1 in 10 photo variant cover. Gone. Deadpool versus Thanos from 2015, Marvel. It actually had a variant cover in the mix. Gone. Another photo cover. Uh, Star Trek Year 5, number 5, the GalaxyCon photo variant cover. Surprisingly expensive, but at 15% off, gone. Few copies of I Hate Fairyland, the, uh, you know, the fuck Fairyland variant cover. Still got those going. Going, going, gone. Futurama Comics 64, which had Santa in it, because you've been very naughty. Uh, a few more uh, variant covers. of Avira, Mistress of the Dark, number 10, Virgin Art variant cover. That's the one where there's, like, no logo or anything on it. I had a Harley Quinn 29 GameStop exclusive sketch variant cover. A place, if you're into variant covers, you should stop every so often just to see what kind of weird goodies they got. A Mile High Comics variant cover from 2013 of Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I should mention those last two. Uh, I, I don't always win on the Ebays. Uh, those last two, the Harley Quinn and the Guardians, I sold below what I paid for them. Why? Because I'm crazy. Why else would I sell Doctor Who Classics number 1 through 10? This is the fourth Doctor from way back when Marvel UK did the Doctor Who magazine, which I actually owned at one time. I had no idea. Uh, they never, they started with the fourth doctor. Well, IDW way back in 2007, 2008, reprinted the whole run and I sold it for an astonishing low 2974 and all sorts of other fun things. But as I, as uh, happened last year, it just, I, I won't even be able to sit to do a podcast, which is why Corey's got some really cool guests lined up for the next couple of weeks. Uh, once I can, I'll do a quick inventory. I'll put the Ebays back. I'll send Corey a quick note. We'll drop it on the Facebook so you guys can hop on board. And, of course, the deal will always be the same. Uh, let me know you drop, you like the podcast. Uh, you drop a note. If you see something you like on Ebays, I'm more than willing to, to give you a first crack or even a, uh, well, how should, I don't know how you'd say, just a, uh, a, a good deal. I might even give you a key to Corey's house. You know, it's not like he's ever there. Go down, read a few omnibuses. Take a look behind those prints. 
Watch some of the stuff on cable that I don't have time to see. Yeah, I, I got a whole bunch of stuff. I, the cable's starting to delete them because they're like, you know, I'm not going to hold things for two years if you're never going to watch it. <sighs> oh, well. Well, now we get to my favorite part of the show. No, 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 not where I leave and go buy a bunch of bagels and eat myself into a carb uh, coma. Uh, bagels. Joe, say bagels. Bagel aisle. <laughs> no, it's freaking geeking. What are you? What are you freaking on, Joe? Oh boy, I'm gonna get my hip cut open in uh, three days. Ugh. So much to do. Christmas shopping. I got my. I did get my handicap permit. So if somebody wants to haul my carcass around the mall, and uh, uh, I, I, we can park right up front. You just gotta kind of push me around. So, uh, other than that. I, I would lie if I said I wasn't a little scared, but, you know, I've gone through it once. I'm going to go through it twice. Hopefully I come through it okay on the other end. Uh, some really disheartening news, uh, I, and I, I guess it's public knowledge because I found out about it on the Facebooks. But my old partner, Pat Kruger, contacted me and said that he has kidney cancer. That's all I know. Uh, I, of course... I'm the type of guy who goes right to WebMD and looks up and reads all about could be this, could be that, could be good, could be bad. They found it while they were checking out something else. So I hate to leave it like this, especially since I'm going to be gone for the next couple of weeks. But I know I will send word to Corey and he can share it on a freaking or geeking coming up once we know more words for him. So it, you know, give him thoughts and prayers, sacrifice a pie. Burn your amazing fantasy 15 and, and, and for good luck for him. Uh, but I'm thinking with him, and I know I'll be talking to him. I, I don't know if he's going to – he's going to try giving me a call before I go under. Otherwise, we're going to catch up afterwards. So uh, the the weird thing about it, just in me ruminating and, you know, take this as you will, it's kind of like, yeah, you got uh, – we did find some kidney cancer. Uh We'll get you in in about three weeks, and we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do about it. Three weeks? So I, I kind of took that as a good sign that, yeah, it's early enough, and, you know, they should be able to get to it. But I I don't know. You know, you listen to other things. I, I listened to a friend because uh, she had emergency gallbladder surgery, much like you did, Corey. And, again, another person who, oh, I'll just lay down. I'll feel better. I don't feel better. Uh, and she had her mom bring it in. So it's kind of interesting comparing the two. But I just, I, I think of things like what, what you guys did, where you, your doctor basically, tell me if I was right or wrong, Corey. They just said, ah, you're going to the hospital now. Because we had to go pick up your car when we finally did pick you up, right? Well, what it was, I, uh, well, I won't get into the details, but I was. Yeah, you go back and look for it. I, I, I was eating dinner with a friend and just pain started getting worse and worse and worse and was told, oh, just go home. And when I got home, it got much worse. So I called my mother, who's a former RN, and she said, you need to go to urgent care right now. And when I got to urgent care, the first thing they wanted to do was make sure that it wasn't a heart attack. That's what they did with her. Yeah, because they're very similar symptoms. And she and, was thinking, too, she was thinking it might have been gas, you know, because same thing. She'd been eating, and now she doesn't feel good, so she wanted to lay down, and she tried to go to the bathroom. It didn't help. And, and then um, they did an x-ray and said, yeah, your gallbladder is completely full. We're going to take it out. They took me from the urgent care by ambulance to the hospital. With siren? No, not with Siren, uh, because it's, you know, it was like 11 o'clock on a Sunday night in the middle of nowhere. That's just, that's on my bucket list. I really, I really want to, I, I got an ambulance ride once, but I want a Siren now. Did you ask them to turn on the Siren? I did, but they, they said you're not really emergency. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so, um, and they were actually debating on whether they would do the surgery that night or the next morning, and they decided the next morning. I do. They. I, I do always want to point this out that before they put me under, you know, they give you the shot and you're starting to go under. The nurse said that I turned to her and said, "You know, I can't pay for this, right?" Ah. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it for me on freaking. 
Uh, how about you, Mr. Strode? What are you freaking on? Um, I was only home for a total of 14 hours this week. I, the group home, you know how I've said, you know, the sleeping overnights, they will come back. Well, they came back, but they came back really quick, and I was already working evenings. So, while it's going to be good for my checkbook in about uh, two weeks, this week was really kind of hard, especially since, you know, I'd worked the weekend before it exploded. So, uh, today I will be getting the stuff out of my car from Black Friday. I had to wait on mine because it was raining when we got home. Yeah. So I left it in the truck for three days, and then and I got to sneak it in when Chris isn't looking either. But and for that's me, what it I was found more, out. If I'm going to be at work all the time, why don't I just leave it in the yeah. car in case I want something to read? And that's what I told Corey. We did it again. We uh, <laughs> we, we we mixed up our orders. But by Next the time year, in the back of the truck, we're going to have those those low colored boxes so you'll be red i'll be blue but you'll be green dan if he can come will be another color. so we just know not to mix them up yes <sighs> but by the time i left work this morning it was i never want to be at another job ever again uh, ever. No job. even uh, though you know i gotta be honest working evenings at the group home now i mean after you give people their pills they want to go to bed they're in bed by eight o'clock but it's still, I'm not home. I'd rather be home with my my stuff. Um, although I was able to mix the podcast yesterday because by the time everybody went to bed, it's oh cool, I can mix the podcast for for tomorrow. Cool. Um, they announced right before Thanksgiving that Mystery Science Theater 3000 will not have another uh, season on Netflix, which um, did it, it did not surprise me because while the first season was that record uh, Kickstarter. The second season on Netflix, they only ordered six episodes. And that's kind of what happens with MST3K. Um, they get a season and not many episodes are ordered and then it's over. It happened on Comedy Central. It happened on Sci-Fi. Now it's happened on Netflix. Uh, Joel has said that they it's not over. They will uh, be able to find a new home pretty easily. I, I'm not holding my breath, to be honest. You know, they've got all the sets. Unlike the last time it ended on sci-fi, they're not striking the sets. Um, everybody involved still wants to do more. They've been out on tour for over a year because Joel is getting... He said, I'm getting to the age where touring is uh, way too hard on me. So I'm going to do one last tour and I'll be done. But still, you know, I... That's one of my favorite shows on TV. I, I enjoy watching it. Um, when Joe told me about Pat, I was pretty shocked. Um, kind of bummed that we don't have any detail, and he doesn't have any detail. So hopefully he gets news pretty quickly on, on how the treatment will go. Um, I'm a little concerned about Joe, just like last time, that he will uh, wake up and be bionic. No, 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 no. And um, the government will press him into service as as a secret agent. Yeah, but I'm I'm waiting to see who my Jamie Summers is going to be. Hey now, wouldn't that be your wife? Ah, uh, no. Remember, they weren't married. Yeah, but I mean, they got married later, which is you know something I got on YouTube because I never did see that episode. And uh, not had a lot of time for reading comics, so. Um... When we are done with this podcast, I'm very glad that I mixed uh, the podcast for this week yesterday because when we're done, uh, I'm not going to do much of anything for the next six to eight hours. Just going to kind of blah. What are you geeking on, Joe? Oh, all sorts of things. Um, I, did I ever talk on the podcast about the uh, potluck food hall in uh, Rosedale? Yes. Okay. I couldn't, I couldn't remember. I have it down that I, I didn't. Because I know last time we talked and we didn't do it. But uh, if you get a chance, check it out. It's all local uh, places. I, I've made it so that every Monday I go there and I've been trying something different. Uh, the big one, of course, I love is the Betty and Earl's Biscuit Kitchen. Because uh, Fox 9, my talks, Jason Matheson and pastry magician Adrian Odom are doing it. And uh, I, I got a little trouble because I bought like a bunch of their biscuits for Thanksgiving. And they're they're not 
Well, they're five bucks a pop. They're they're a good meal, but uh, when you buy fifteen of them, yeah, you do the math. And and my wife did too. She just said, "Don't do that again." But you got you got <laughs> Grand Old Creamery. You got Smack Shack. I got to get there to Nordic Waffles because they at State Fair they do the uh, uh, Pebby, Pebbles and Bam Bam Waffle filled with peanut butter cups and cereals. Ooh, look, I'm drooling already. So I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss eating there. Uh, I did I did see. Uh, quite a bit uh, lately in movies. In the theater, I saw Ford versus Ferrari, which uh, Christian Bale, uh, I'm brain locking, Matt, Matt Damon. No, was it Matt Damon? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what it was brilliant. I knew nothing of the story. Uh, and of course, if you want to, just go to Wikipedia and you find out. But it's based on real life events. Uh, basically... The Ford just decided to take on Ferrari, who'd been winning the. Uh, I can't even say it. What was the race? Tour de. Tour de France. Me. Thank you. And uh, it was kind of interesting. The uh, the acting was good. I enjoyed the uh, cinematography, and people are like, "This could have Oscar buzz," and I'm like, "Well, yeah, I could see that," because there were times where I just got totally engrossed. If they don't win one for. Uh, uh, the cinematography, there, there's really something wrong. It's basically the story is American automobile designer Carol Shelby. If you've collected Hot Wheels, you know what Shelby is. And fearless British car racer Ken Miles battle corporate inf- interference, the laws of physics, and their own personal demons to build a revolutionary vehicle, revolutionary vehicle for the Ford Motor Company. And they plan to compete against the car, racing cars of Esno Ferrari at the 24-hour Le Mans in France. And it's based on a story from 66. I went in just because it was a $5 movie night, and I enjoyed the living bejesus out of it. So I recommend you do too. Then I turned to Netflix, and uh, I watched one called The Laundromat. And uh, hang on a second. While I, this was one of those where I went in, and I wasn't quite sure what it was about. It has more stars in the heavens. And it basically just starts out when uh, an idyllic vacationer played by, uh, oh, you probably never heard of her, um, Meryl Streep. Yeah, never last. She takes a vacation and discovers that uh, although her husband died, the insurance policy that the boat company took off and ends up through various shell corporations and things not paying out on anything. And she kind of goes into finding out about it. It's kind of a biographical comedy drama uh, directed by Steven uh, Skorderberg. If you watch this and you do not, you are not outraged by the end of it. Uh, I don't want to say too much about it, but you know, you you'll argue, uh, yeah, it's a corrupt system. Both sides do it. The politicians do it. You're part of the problem because what happens is, well, you and I are just tisking and shaking our fingers at both sides. They have rigged the game so badly against us through laws and through. Hey, tax havens and through corporations. A couple years ago in 2016, there was a leak of something called the Panama Papers. Yes, and I'm amazed that no one, you know, I read that and I wanted to get a pitchfork and a rake and a torch and storm the Bastille. And people were just, eh. Yeah. I mean, you want to know how the rich stay rich and why you're schmucking down here and why you, politicians are trying to take away your social security. Uh, this infuriated me, and you really need to go and watch this for your own good, because maybe, just maybe, enough of us, well, how did you put it, Corey? The last time enough of us got upset, we invented the guillotine? Yes. You know, and this is shit that's going on now. You want to bury your head in the sand, go ahead and bury your head in the sand, but that just makes you complicit and part of the problem. And, uh, yeah, I went into this, and I was a little, little tough to figure out what was going on, and by the time I got through it, I was just, oh, I was so mad I did dishes. No, I'm sorry. That's Emperor's New Groove reference. Never mind. So I needed something to, to mellow out. And what did I pick? 
well, we were watching Netflix, so I watched The Irishman, which I guess is also based on a, a semi-true story. Uh, I went in, and again, both of these, I, I had all three of these movies that I'm talking about, I went in with the advantage of not knowing what the heck they were about. All I knew is uh, Martin Scorsese directed this. All I knew, it was three hours, 29 minutes, and it was on Netflix, which was nice because then I could pause it occasionally, go to the bathroom, get something to eat, go to the bathroom. Did I mention I went to the bathroom a few times? It wasn't like Avengers where, like, okay, I'm going to dehydrate myself for two weeks beforehand so I don't have to go to the bathroom. And in the middle of the 10th minutes, I'm like, shit, i got to go to the bathroom. But in the 1950s, truck driver Frank Sheeran gets involved with Russell Buffalino and his Pennsylvania crime family. As Shreen climbs the ranks to become a top hitman, he also goes to work for Jimmy Hoffa. Uh, And probably doesn't mean anything to you kids nowadays, but he was a powerful teamster tied to organized crime. What I didn't realize, as I'm prone to do after seeing a movie such as Ford vs. Ferrari or The Irishman, I go to see, especially was that based on true events, was it? And what was interesting about The Irishman, I'm not going to say anything about it if, if I don't want to give any spoilers, but it is based on a book that uh, Frank Sheeran wrote about it. And, of course, there has been the, the claims that he makes. Other people have come and said, I don't think what you're saying is true. And, again, go see the movie and then uh, go read about it. And when I come back, we'll talk more about it. But, you know, it's it's a crime drama and it's allegedly true so it's kind of i just fascinating with all that i found the series movies that made us another Netflix yes show. i was gonna oh. put that out it's by the same people who do the toys that made us yes oh what fun only four se- episodes but boy people are coming from all walks of life gabbing about this one uh dirty dancing ghostbusters die hard and home alone are the first four. And what they do is they go in and they kind of tell how these movies were made. And, you know, we look at them and we think, oh, yeah, Ghostbusters, what a no hitter. Brilliant. No, not at the time it was it was made. Everything. Oh, yeah. As um, it has this. No, go ahead. I would like to point out that at the time it was made, saying that, oh, former Saturday Night Live stars was the easiest way to say this movie is going to bomb. And what Dan Aykroyd's movie before that was Dr. Detroit. <laughs> Doctor, I remember playing that on on uh, playing the song because the theme song was probably the most interesting thing out of the movie. But it was this, and of course, I think Animal House is what got that fever going because everybody was like, "Oh, John Belushi's so incredible!" Although I do remember the Neighbors with Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, which I never finished because I did not find it funny. Again, maybe I have to go back and look at it. So, yeah, just a couple of things. There's two more. We watched the one on Die Hard, and we watched the one on uh, on Ghostbusters, like I was talking about. And I love these things. I mean, I, I read the book on Caddyshack. I watched the, the making of MASH. Uh, I'm reading uh, a couple books now uh, called The 50-Year Mission, which is based on Star Trek. And Mark A. Altman and Edward Gross uh, they have been writing about Star Trek for decades. If you read Starlog, if you read Cinematog, Cinefantastic, Cinef- I'm trying to think of the magazine that was back then. If you read anything about Star Trek, more than not, these guys probably wrote about it because they've been writing about Star Trek for years. They had access to all the actors, and they did two big volumes, uh, Star Trek, the first 50 years, and then the second one, the next 25 years, I'm sorry, 25 years, and then the next 25 years. And cover everything up to, from the beginning to J.J. Abrams. And it's written in uh, an oral history. So they, they're taking uh, quotes and from their uh, – this had to been an immense project for these two just to put everything together in some type of coherent. It's a lot of fun. It's interesting to read. Uh, so – but, again, getting Star Trek going, we look at it and we're like, oh, yeah, that's brilliant. How could it not have been? Well, first of all, it wasn't when it first came out. And second of all, the original Spock was supposed to have this big red plate in his stomach, and that's how he ate food. And that was Gene Roddenberry's concept. He wanted an alien. He wanted it to look alien-like. Uh, so go go figure. Just uh, 
it's just interesting. And again, movies that made us is, is a lot of fun. And I got to finish the toy one too, because uh, I only picked up a few and I guess there's, did they do a season three? I'll, I'll figure it out. So I got tons of stuff to watch, not to mention read. Uh, I mentioned the Star Trek books. I picked up becoming Superman, my journey from poverty to Hollywood by J. Michael Straczynski with an introduction by Neil Gaiman. And Corey, I did check to the be- I did check. He did finish it. I mean, he's not dead, of course, but I mean, he did finish. It does end, have an ending on it. It's not like a to be continued or I'm not going to finish it because I want to go somewhere else. Uh, I also got in the mail uh, one of my uh, Kickstarters for, that I wasn't expecting and it was kind of fun. Headlocked, The Last Territory, an illustrated serial drama from, oh, just uh, oodles of people. I'm trying to find the name of the guy who, uh, oh, Michael. Kingston, he had. Uh, I, we we I know we mentioned this when he first did the Kickstarter. Yeah, I actually have his original comics, which I didn't realize because I just if I see wrestling on it, I'll I'll pick it up and just try it. And he, Michael went the extra distance because something on my Kickstarter is effed up because it just puts in the weirdest numbers. I must have wrote the wrong street number because I've had a couple return. Uh, Michael was able to contact me and say, "Hey, I got." It got returned to me. I said, well, this is my correct address. So that's not what Kickstarter's saying. I said, well, this is like the second, third time Kickstarter's done that. So somewhere along the line, they're just auto-filling the wrong address. But thank you, Mike, for doing it. This has stories by uh, all sorts of people. Art from Jerry Lawler. I got. I went the four-volume illustrated autographed editions. So I've got Jerry autographing it. I'm assuming Mike Kingston autographed it. I've got a few with a third autograph on it. I'm not quite sure who it is. Uh, but again, I'm really excited to, to get down to read these. And they arrived okay. One's a little ding, but it's not anything Michael did. My daughter knocked that thing over. How dare you! And you know, I talk about all these things I'm going to read. Honestly, I know when I recover from my uh, surgery, I probably won't read Butkus, but I will keep a log because I believe last time I I had so many things to talk about, things I watched. So maybe I'll I'll uh, come back and I'll say, oh, we got no, I didn't read any comics, but here's what I read. And a shout out to Nick Miller. Nick Miller is a uh, new listener. He he sent me a note saying, hey Joe, I'm somewhat of a new listener to the show. I started at episode one, which uh, I I think is going to earn you a Joe prize. And I'm running through them at work. I'm really enjoying them. Thanks for the great content. I really enjoy your guys' views. And thanks for the ad, because I added as a friend. Uh, if if you're a friend and you want to add me or Corey on Facebook, I'm sure we got no problems with it. You can follow us on – we have a, a – Corey posts all the podcasts on uh, our Facebook page, Crazy Comics and Stories. And, uh, Nick, I, I'm going to uh, uh, task you, if, if you're so inclined – this is something that I've, I've always wanted to do, but I just never get around to doing it. If you're, as you're listening and you hear us ask a question and we never answer it, that podcast, jot it down and send me a note and we will cover it. Because every so often we get somebody, I think the best one was when uh, we went up to Granite City Comics and uh, Tim pulled you aside and went, hey, <laughs> you, Corey. Which is funny because Tim never says hey, but not, <laughs> hey. Like, Mark never goes ah, but ah, but you know what the heck. So and he, you know, again, we'll say things, we'll promise things, we we may not deliver, and for that, I apologize. Corey doesn't. No, is sorry. I'm not apologize. I am sorry. No, that's so, Joe's but, job. He's the executive. It, it is. It is my job. No, no, I'm supreme producer. You're supreme producer now. Yeah, it's yes. your job to apologize. So, Joe, Nick, is sorry Nick, for the error. Nick. Corey, will you go with me? Nick is now our new executive producer. Oh, okay. That? Yeah, okay. Nick, your job is not only to apologize for us, but if you do, if if you think about it, because you'll be at work and everything, but if you find, hey, we, we asked a question and we never answered it that episode, jot it down, send me a note. Uh, and just for starting at episode one, whenever I see Corey again, we'll, we'll, we'll send you our second Joe Prize, which is amazing because the first one hasn't been sent out yet, which itself deserves a Joe prize. And while I'm contemplating the paradox I just committed, uh, Corey, what are you uh, geeking on? 
Uh, well, the first thing I'm geeking on is even though there will be no new uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000s for the foreseeable future, they did still have the Turkey Day with six episodes in a row on Thanksgiving. And I'm very, very happy that I had that. There was um, one that I'd seen too many times. And I decided, oh, I'll, I'll switch over and watch a football game instead. And I did. That was Laser Blast, which I think I have seen more times than um, the movie I've probably seen the most, which is Plan 9 from Outer Space. Yes, that's right. The movie I've seen the most times in my life is Plan 9 from Outer Space. And I uh, the first guy I ever watched it for. Is it that, uh, if you have not seen Plan 9 from Outer Space... Go watch it now. Beep, 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 Wallow beep, beep, in the joy that is Edward's first draft of a movie. Poor happy. Uh, second thing I'm geeking on the history of how they made the thing. I mean, it, that'll make you want to watch it again in appreciation. <laughs> second thing I'm geeking on is yes, I am sleeping at the group home again. I will be phasing out of the evening shifts and going into sleep shifts because, uh, well, they people leave and there is no better job in the world than showing up for work going to sleep waking up and leaving <laughs> yes there is more to it than that yes i have to wake up a bunch of times but still what what do you do at your job oh i sleep if i do that i get yelled at yeah if i get if i do that at my office job i get yelled at i don't care what craig versing says they what you know i i can't just sleep at work tomorrow anyways <laughs> Um, my orders from the huge sales that in stock trades and um, cheap graphic novels have started to show up. So I came home to, oh, here's a box of comics. Oh, cool. I forgot I ordered these. So with that and the um, the uh, Black Friday, I, I may need to build a whole new wing on to the compound. <laughs> but I'm throwing two or three uh, graphic novels in the car. And uh, at the uh, group home job, I'm able to read while, after everybody goes to sleep. Or one thing that they have now that they did not have at the cottages, they do have uh, cable TV where you can watch YouTube. So I'm actually able to watch AEW Dark, NWA Power, and uh, MLW, all which are wrestling shows that are on the YouTubes. So, Joe, if you want to watch AEW... They have an AEW show on there. NWA is uh, Billy Corrigan's rebirth of the National Wrestling Alliance. It is an old school studio wrestling show. And um, I got to tell you, the match they had between Nick Aldis and James Storm, one of the best matches of the year. And uh, MLW, is they, they're on BN Sports. They're a small, um, they're an indie, uh, major league wrestling. They I've heard a lot of praise for them. I'm just starting to watch the show, so I'm just starting to get to know who the characters are. But, man, there's, you know, it makes it so if I'm not home to to enjoy my house, I can at least get caught up on, on some stuff that I would watch if I were home. And the last thing I am a geeking on is um, the the golden age simon and kirby omnibus came out and what it is these are all the stories that joe simon and jack kirby did at marvel before they went to dc it's got red raven it's got um the vision it's got all the captain america stories and it really shows how first off it shows how bad joe simon was as an artist before he teamed up with kirby i just want to get that out there that i'm Reading one story, it's like, oh, this is just awful to look at. And it's, oh, that's before he teamed up with Kirby. And then when he teamed up with Kirby, it's like a quantum leap in quality. But they kept getting better every issue. So by the time you get to the end, their stuff is really polished, really exciting, really well done. Um, omnibuses are hard to carry around, so I really only read them at home. This is one where I bought it for historical purposes and instead am really enjoying most of the stuff in it. There are times when, you know, you can tell it's the 40s and uh, there was a lot of racism in pop culture in the 40s. And it's beyond the point where you just kind of excuse it to where now it's just embarrassing. Where it's like, oh, oh, yeah, ugh. But I 
I'm enjoying that read. Um, I also, uh, let's see, got the um, Marv Wolfman Gene Colan Tomb of Dracula miniseries that they did in the 90s, which I bought when it came out in the uh, prestige format, but I have not read it since. And reading it now, knowing that it's the last thing that they did together. Such a good story. Man, this is good stuff. Um, head on over to CheapGraphicNovels.com. They're having a huge, huge sale. Um, just tons of stuff at like 70, 80, and 90% off. Just clearing out the warehouse. Um, fill your house the way I filled mine. <laughs> Believe it or not, kids, you have listened to me blather on about funny books, and Joe, too, for almost two hours. Ah, you'll miss me when I'm gone. And by the time you hear this, Joe will be in recovery. So, uh, if you want to send him a message that uh, that uh, you're, you're you're pulling for him, yeah, go ahead. I don't. And, and Mozique, I know you're out there. I don't need another Twister game. I don't know, man. <laughs> I didn't open the last one. I can barely play Twister before I got the hip. And as we say every week, the comic we like the least, we still like better in the comic that you like the most, Joe. You know, I was wondering why there are so many stories about vampires in Europe, but not in Africa. But then I realized vampires killed by holy water, and they bless the rains down in Africa. See you in 2020, folks.